Thanks for joining us on this edition of National Focus. I'm Tasia Flosak. Coming up, new agriculture minister says the fishing industry is an untold success story. Seven recognized for their contribution to the Pitit Saban constituency and a five-star plus cruise ship makes its inaugural call to Dominica. Stay tuned for details of these and other stories after this. If you can believe this... Come by my house and let me show you some movies. Why can't you believe this? Some mothers don't believe their own children when they say they've been sexually abused and they don't report it. Remember, if anyone asks to see or touch their private parts, touches them inappropriately, shows them or forces them to touch one's private parts, has sex with them, shows them pornographic material, or deliberately lets them hear or see the act of sex, then it is sexual abuse. Believe your child and report the sexual abuse. For more information about child abuse, contact these agencies. This message brought to you by UNICEF and this station. Thanks for staying with us. The Honorable Parliamentary Representative for the Casabrus constituency, Johnson Jago, intends to create an avenue to allow his constituents to contribute to their own development. In a recent interview with GIS News, Honorable Jago revealed plans to create a Casabrus Development Fund. The Casabrus MP says the fund will commence in his new term. It will be implemented by the village councils. There will be a board managing the fund and the Annually, contributions will be made to the village councils, of which they will administer to needy um, 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 community members. Um, for instance, somebody just wants some assistance for surgery to make the cost of the $5,000 they're now charging for every um, operation. Um, we will assist them. Somebody has difficulties with assisting the children at education level, at whatever level we will assist them. Somebody has an emergency, they have to rush overseas for something, we will assist them. The funeral grants that we always go to the government for, we'll make a contribution to that. A needy person needs a cylinder or something, some assistance in whatever way, we will assist them. Somebody needs to buy some medications, we will assist them, they will apply for it. But annually, I'll be requesting that every member of the constituency makes a contribution within their own limit to the Casabrus Constituency Development Fund. Honorable Drago says he will also approach those residing in the diaspora as well as corporate citizens for contributions to the fund. The Casabrus MP appealed to constituents to give their time, efforts and financial resources to build the constituency. The Casper's constituency consists of the communities of Good Hope, Pitit Sufria, San Suve, and Casper's. Adopting an attitude of selflessness and generosity. That was the Christmas message to the nation by His Excellency the President of the Commonwealth of Dominica, Charles A. Savre. His Excellency President Savra, in a message aired on radio and television on Christmas Day, encouraged Dominicans to reflect on the true meaning of Christmas and to embrace kindness and love. We should not merely celebrate the birth of Christ as an event of history or as a time to engage in reckless abandon with wine, food and music, but rather as a time to reunite with family and friends a time to help those in need, to give hope to those in despair, and to show them the kindness of heart and the generosity and love that is consistent with the message of the Christ child, the Prince of Peace. The President also used the opportunity to encourage nationals to put aside political differences post the December 8th general elections. Now that the election campaign is over, and the people have elected a government of their choice. It is for us to put aside our differences as a people and come together as one to build upon the foundations we have laid over the years and to work our way through the economic and financial challenges that lie ahead. The island's head of state also applauded those who played an integral role in the maintenance of charitable organizations in Dominica. We should look to the future with great optimism 
as we seek to build on our accomplishments and pray for the continued outpouring of God's blessings, grace, and mercy. As we prepare to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I wish to take this opportunity on behalf of the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica and on behalf of my wife and myself to recognize and thank those individuals, business houses, and non-government organizations that continue to give time and financial resources to national charities and non-profit organizations dedicated to the care of orphaned and abandoned children, the aged, the sick, and the shortings. The fishing industry in Dominica is an unspoken success story. This is the view of the Honorable Minister for Agriculture and Fisheries, Johnson Drago. Honorable Drago, speaking with GIS last Wednesday, affirmed that he is ready as the new minister to build on the strength of the industry and take it to the next level. I had a discussion with the, the um, fisheries department and, and, and they are saying that the time is right when we have to start thinking of the export of fish from Dominica. They believe that we've reached a stage, the industry has grown, we are able to sustain the local market in its entirety, and now we can start thinking of export of fish. So all the mechanisms will be looked into in 2015 for um, the different license, the different training, whatever it has to take, and so on, environmental concerns, to ensure that all the mechanisms are in place and we can start thinking of the export of fish. The Honorable Minister says that the success of the industry needs to be in the spotlight. We want to give the statistics on how well we are doing within the agricultural sector so people can understand. Because I believe the fisheries sector, it's not given the prominence of the role that it plays in um, the overall development of Dominica. Because our fisher folks, they are doing very well. There are several fish landing sites in Dominica where a number of families depend on fishing and thrive because of fishing. And we could name Fort Saint Jean, Saint Sauveur, uh, Newton, Portsmouth, Marigot, just to name a, a few key areas. They are major fish landing sites and thousands of pounds of fish come into this port, even for Kole, annually, and the fishers are doing very well. Government has established filling stations in several fishing communities on the island to facilitate access and alleviate the cost of fuel for fisher folk. About $1.4 million have been spent on setting up six such filling stations on the island, and there are plans to commission at least four others. Also this news time, a 516 passenger cruise ship made its inaugural call to Dominica. Nisha Charles brings you this report. It's a five-star plus cruise ship hailing from the shores of Germany. With only a year and a half since entering service, the MV Europa 2 enters Dominican waters for the first time. Passengers from the ship explored Dominica on Sunday, docking at the Cabritz cruise ship berth in the only port in the Caribbean which is located in a national park. To welcome the captain and crew were representatives from the Discover Dominica Authority, the Dominica Air and Seaport Authority, and the ship's agent, Richard Shipping. Addressing the gathering was Odile John Baptist representing the Discover Dominica Authority. Dominica has an abundance of large screen vegetations rivers and a vibrant history and culture which far exceeds that of our competitors. I do hope that visitors are able to go out today and enjoy the surrounding natural attractions such as the Indian River, Cabritz National Park and the Shodia Pool. Dominica has undertaken several measures with a view of, ex of meeting and exceeding the expectations of visitors and this is why Discover Dominica Authority takes great pride in the fact that MV Europea II has selected Dominica as one of the ports of call for 2014. The ship's agent, Richard Shipping, represented by Gary Ed, welcomed the captain and crew to Dominica and particularly to the town of Portsmouth. Our company, Richard, has had the privilege and the pleasure of representing cruise ships in Dominica for the past 50 years. And it is always a pleasure for me, especially, to welcome a new ship. 
because it means if a new ship is coming, we're doing something that is right. Um, Portsmouth is not as often used by cruise ships, but I think time will come because very soon we'll have this hotel there, so there'll be more facilities for guests who do not want to go on tour. And the town itself, very attractive, interesting place with lots of different tours and things to do. My only wish, Captain, is try and come a little more often. Once is not enough. <laughs> The mayor of Portsmouth, Titus Francis, emphasized the need for the passengers to explore the town of Portsmouth. It is very fitting that we begin to see some, some activity taking place in this area. I think it will lend very well to the, to the local economic development of Portsmouth. Um, I want to repeat, reiterate, that we look forward to more calls. <laughs> I, I don't think we can, we can under mention it. I think it's necessary for us. We want to also encourage um, the ship's agent to, to put Portsmouth on your itinerary of, of, of visits. Um, the town in itself has a very rich culture, a rich history, and um, while you're here, I invite you to take a, a taste of as much of it as possible. With its five-star plus service, it ensures exclusiveness and relaxation for its guests, including a jazz bar, a cooking school, and a photo shop. Every room on this ship is a suite with its own private balcony. This is the ship's only call to Dominica for the season, but the ship's captain, Christian Van Slamen, hopes that come 2016, Dominica can be on their itinerary once guests are pleased with the destination. For me, it's the first time calling here, and I was deeply impressed when approaching here the pier, how beautiful the landscape looks. And now, as I heard that this is a national park, I'm even more proud to be here with our ship to uh, take part in your beautiful nation, nature and your uh, fantastic island. And, of course, I will encourage our head office to call here more frequently because I'm really sure also our passengers will love the stay here at your island and I think everybody will return with happy memories here in the evening before we are sailing. Since the cruise season began, six ships have made their inaugural call to Dominica. 191 ships are expected to call during the 2014-2015 cruise season. Nisha Charles, GIS News. Thank you, Nisha, for that report. And finally, this news time, seven individuals were honored by the Pitted Savannah Reunion Committee at an award ceremony on Sunday. The ceremony marked the official end of the reunion celebrations. Odell Hamilton, Pearl Etienne, Bernard Daru, Dory Tit, Ralph Daru, Philip Hilaire, and Selwyn Laura, represented in absentia, were recognized for their notable contributions towards the community's development in the areas of fisheries, community service, sports, and education, among others. Contestants of the Miss Pitted Savan were also recognized for their participation in the first ever reunion pageant, where Misha Francis was a contest winner. The reunion celebration hailed a success was the brainchild of parliamentary representative for the Pitted Saban constituency, Honorable Dr. Kenneth Daru, who is also Minister for Health and Environment. Being a parliamentary representative is not just about building roads, or building schools, building health centers, etc. Yes, this is a very important part of it, but also building people and developing communities by, by building um, social skills, building relationships and getting people together. And I think the reunion committee, the reunion committee sorry, um, should just that. The highlight of this reunion activity really was the participation of the, of the young people. And, um, it shows that um, while sometimes, okay, the, the, the news media and everything else highlight, okay, the social ills, okay, and the ill discipline sometimes of our young people, that, some, that when the young people do well, that we also have to um, highlight it and appreciate that. And I think the young members, the youth, youth um, of the reunion committee, um, prove just that, that they, that they are capable of taking on um, responsibility of taking on certain tasks and making it happen. The Honorable Minister challenged his constituents to continue building community spirit, Setting aside differences, President of the Reunion Committee, Claudius Lestrade, shared his similar sentiments with the Honorable Minister, highlighting the contribution of youth to the celebration. Lestrade says it is necessary for older persons to facilitate the development of these vibrant youth. We have realized, have realized that coming out of the Reunion Committee, that of the Reunion activities, we have been able to see 
that the youth of Petit Saban is still alive and well. And we know of the many negative things that young people's, people can be involved with. In, and with the young people involved in the Union Committee, I can say that we have a good future for Petit Saban. And they cannot do it alone, and our support is very important. And the little that we can offer goes a long way. And we have listened to them, and we have identified that the youth enjoys involvement. They want to be a part of what is happening, and we should not leave them out. Following the ceremony, honorees of the celebration, who are also members of the Petit Saban Cultural Group, treat you all pleasant to some light entertainment. <music> The Petit Saban reunion launched in September 2013 was hosted under the theme Connecting Families, Uniting Community. The main event which took place the last two weeks in December nearing the Christmas holidays included a masquerade ball, youth symposium, various beautification projects among other activities. And before we go, here are a few announcements. Vacancy exists for one consultant accountant within the Office of the Director of Audit. As part of the EU-funded Public Financial Management Reform Program, an accountant will provide technical assistance over a six-month period. The successful candidates will be expected to train officers on how to perform the following tasks in a proactive manner. Under the supervision of the Director of Audit, develop, monitor, and review departmental accounting policies, procedures, and processes, audit and prepare financial statements in accordance with relevant guidelines, frameworks, and statutory requirements, conduct performance reviews of government ongoing programs, and conduct performance reviews of statutory corporations and government-owned companies. The ideal candidate should possess at least a first degree in accounting or other related field, at least professional qualifications in accounting from a recognized accounting body, ACCA, CGA or similar, general professional experience, knowledge of principles and procedures for compensation and benefits, knowledge of laws, legal codes, government regulations and executive orders, knowledge of business and management principles, knowledge of economic and accounting principles and practices and the analysis and reporting of financial data, specific professional experience, at least five years professional experience in accounting, knowledge of commonly used concepts, practices and procedures within the field of business administration. Applications including curriculum vitae should be submitted no later than Wednesday, 31st December 2014 at 12 p.m. to the National Authorizing Officer for the European Development Fund Office of the NAO slash EDF, 3rd Floor Financial Center, Kennedy Avenue PO Box 1102, Rosa Dominica or email to edf at cwdom.dm. The Government of the Commonwealth of Dominica has received financing from the Global Environment Facility through the United Nations Environment Programme to support the preparation of Dominica's third national communications to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC. Part of this funding is to be utilized to hire national consultants to undertake technical studies and draft the national report. The government of Dominica is seeking expressions of interest from suitably qualified national consultants who have at least five years experience in the following areas, greenhouse gas, inventory from energy, transportation, solid waste and industrial processes, inventory of carbon sinks, forest, inventory of carbon sinks, agriculture, climate change mitigation including renewable energy, energy efficiency and energy conservation. Mainstreaming climate change into national development planning, training, public education outreach and climate change, and systematic observation systems for climate change, including hydrometeorological systems.
Work on this project will commence in January 2015 and will be completed by May 2016. Successful applicants will be expected to start work on or before February 2, 2015. Any persons interested in being considered for any of the above positions are requested to submit their current curriculum vitae and letter of interest to the following. Director, Environmental Coordinating Unit, Rozo, Fisheries Complex, Dame Eugenia Charles Boulevard, Rozo, Commonwealth of Dominica, telephone number 266-5256 or fax 448-4577, email ecu at dominico.gov.dm. Submissions can be submitted electronically or in writing to the above address and must be received no later than Wednesday, January 7, 2015 at 4 p.m. Expressions of interest received after this date will not be considered. Private candidates registered to write the January 2015 CXC examinations are asked to collect their timetables from the local registrar's office during normal office hours. Please be guided accordingly. And that's the English news coming up, your daily tip. Dominica is blessed with an abundance of water, but getting it to your home is an expensive venture. You have a responsibility to conserve water, to use it wisely. Remember the old adage, you never miss the water till the well runs dry. Think water, think life. The black sea tortuga fungus can survive on banana and plantain leaves even after they have been cut from the tree. Farmers and hucksters are encouraged to use alternate cushioning material when moving produce from farm to the market. Do not use banana and plantain leaves as cushioning. It is against the law to move banana and plantain trash from the field. Obey the law and stop the spread of black sitatuka today. In light of the Christmas holidays, you may be feeling a little sluggish, either because of the long weekend of activities or it could mean you have a slight magnesium deficiency. So here's what you can do to boost your energy. Try making time for an extra hour of rest during a day or two and also increase your magnesium intake by eating a balanced diet. It helps if your diet contains whole grains, particularly bran cereal, or eat more fish. This will ensure your vitamin and mineral needs are met as well. A handful of almonds, hazelnuts or cashews added to your daily diet can also help boost your energy. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like us on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash GIS News Dominica and follow us on Twitter at GIS Dominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscast on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here on the GIS News production team, I'm Tasia Flosak. Thanks for watching.